Oh, my God. 
as well as performing in her own principality, the singing, striking miners of South Wales have appeared all over England, not only to raise funds for their cause, but also in order to share their culture with such cities as Liverpool, Bristol and London. A culture that is so typically Welsh and so untypically English. Indeed, if any impartial inquirer wishes to test the assertion that Englishmen are English and Welshmen Welsh, he has but to make the journey from Paddington to say a strad Honda. The man who goes aboard the Fishgut Express with a carriage full of Englishmen knows exactly what to expect. They will be stiff, reserved and silent. They will put up their newspapers as a fortification against familiarity. If circumstances compels one of them to address a few words, he throws a sir into the sentence, indicating that he speaks under necessity and that he is willing to keep his distance from others who, in turn, are expected to keep their distance from him. In English trains, hotels, and other such public places, until a man is proved beyond doubt to be an honest fellow, by way of precaution, he is treated as if he was probably a pickpocket or a foreign spy. When the train pulls up at Newport, the atmosphere grows a little warmer. One feels that the glacial period is done. If a Western Valley train is in the bay, the world takes a new verdure of cheeriness. The icicles begin to melt. And one can now summon up enough courage to ask a neighbour if he may look at the Newport Argus or the Western Mail. Moving up the valley of the Honda, the traveller finds a sharp contrast to those cold companions of Paddington. Conversation flows easily through the carriage. It deals with everything and nothing. The terms of address are altered in place of the frigid, Sir, of the Great Western, comes the friendly, well known of the Tafail Railway. The former is a barrier to easy conversation. The latter is a bridge. There is a great gulf fixed between the spirit of Paddington and the spirit of the valleys that converge on pont de -Priz. Oh, where my heart lies. 
community. Now, over the last nine months, the support we've had has been incredible. We've had a lot of money come, we've had a lot of food come, and we've had a lot of clothes come. But in this point in time, we need physical support on these picket lines. Now, I'm appealing to everybody in this room, after this holiday's over, get out and join us on these picket lines. Now, a few experiences I've had in myself throughout the strike. I was stopped on the Dartford Tunnel when we was going to Yorkshire. The coppers turned us round. They told us we couldn't go up into Yorkshire to join the Yorkshire miners. They thought we was going to Nottingham. So they stopped us going out the county picketing. I've been arrested twice. And now the bail conditions are that I can't go out of Kent to go picketing. There's a conspiracy by the police and the magistrates to stop us from winning this strike. While I'm talking about the police, I'd just like to say this. The blacks in this country have been treated like shit and nobody's helped them. The Irish in this country have been treated like shit and nobody's helped them. Them green and common women for the last three years have been dragged all over this country and nobody's really helped them. Now they've come for the miners. Now they've come from the NUM. Now they've come from the trade union movement. You've got to get off your ass to help us. Now, through this strike, there's been a lot of poetry. This is my one and only poem. Justice for the miners, down with the police state. Victory to the miners, victory to all working people in struggle throughout the world. Now tonight it gives me great pleasure to introduce...
Shots, shots. 